Right, let's uh, go back to the city of Tswane and our reporter there is Patricia Fasaki. Patricia, thanks very much uh, for joining us. Uh, give us an update. Has there been a vote? What's the state of play right now? Good evening, Peter. Um, uh there is actually voting that is taking place as we speak. Uh, the councillors, the Tswane councillors, are busy voting in um, uh, a possible speaker, but it's been a cat and mouse game since early this morning. That's why um, it's been such a long day. It's uh, late in the evening and we are still at this process. Now, this is the second time that they're voting. Earlier, they uh, started uh, the voting process, of course, with the help of the IEC that is here um, to facilitate the whole uh, process of electing a speaker. But after three of the councillors actually violated the rules, um, in particular the rules of secrecy, um, there was a whole uproar in a council where we even saw some of of uh, the uh, other uh, other councillors from the EFF and the ANC site, um, not taking it very well. Um, this was, uh, of course, done by DA councillors who exposed who they voted for. Peter, you would understand what happened the last time with uh, the Morunwa Makwarela saga, where, of course, some DA members and some Action SA members voted with uh, the other site and ultimately voted for uh, Dr. Maguarel, and that is how he won. So uh, obviously some of these councillors wanted to show their honesty. So they showed their votes. That did not occur well with the rest of council. It was an uproar. There was a standoff, and of course they declared a dispute. Uh, the IEC and the city manager had to intervene. Um, they then convened a private meeting with all the whips where they decided that uh, that whole process was null and void and they had it to start from scratch and they amended some of the rules to try and of course prevent um, a reoccurrence of what happened and just to establish some order uh, while this process is happening. Um, the city manager also reit uh, reiterating that they need to conclude this today because uh, the voting in of the speaker is of paramount importance as this needs to pave the way for a mayor to be elected. So he appealed on all the uh, councillors to really just behave, appeal, appealed on uh, their cooperation, saying that this process needs to be uh, concluded today. It cannot be postponed. And of course, they then agreed that uh, there can be a second round. So as I speak to you, um, they are voting. Uh, rules a little bit changed. They are locked inside of uh, council uh, while they conclude uh, that process. But Peter, it's been a hectic, hectic day. Um, there has been the one adjournment after the other. Throughout the day, they were fighting over the expulsion of uh, Action S a councillor Nkele Mulapo, uh, the EFF and the ANC uh, standing up for her, defending her, saying that she was being unfairly uh, treated, uh, she didn't deserve what was happening. Uh, in particular, the uh, issue around uh, the lie detector test, saying that but she actually passed that test. The test showed that she did not betray, betray the coalition partners, so they didn't understand on the basis of what exactly is she expelled. Of course, Action SA uh, is accusing her of bringing the party into disrepute, um, saying that she has shared some sensitive information with her husband, Abel Tao, who we know was a former DA member and also a former Action SA member who ha obviously had been expelled out of the party. So those dynamics played out for the betterment of uh, the day, that back and forth fierce stand off, some of it really getting extremely aggressive as some of these councillors really had to go at each other, some of them even, um, you know, getting physical, pushing one another. So it was really uh, a tense situation as uh, everybody is playing out. And you would understand that the numbers um, are not looking so good for, in particular, the ANC and the EFF site. Now that uh, Ngele is not in a uh, council, of course, uh, the... Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, COPE member has not uh, been replaced subsequently after uh, the resignation of uh, Marunwa Makwarela. So that ultimately brought down the number of councillors to 211 from uh, what we saw last time, which was 213. So that has really affected the dynamics uh, in council where uh, the other side is really, you know, tittering on the side of caution as they know that they are not that strong. The multi-party coalition, on the other hand, feeling that they still have the numbers and they can actually run the show. And they've been pushing for this to be concluded um, as they feel that they've got the numbers, they've got the upper hand. But the ANC, again, reiterating, saying that uh, it is still a game that is playing out. They're still gunning on the disgruntled ANC, uh, 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 Action SA and the disgruntled DA members who they feel are still unhappy, in particular the DA members who feel that they have been overlooked for the mayoral position as, of course, we know that Celia Brink is the multi-party coalition partners uh, mayoral candidate that they have, of course, uh, put forward. So um, you have the ANC and the EFF saying that they're capitalizing on uh, that broken relationship, hoping that today, um, again, some of those unhappy councillors can actually vote with them. Um, just to remind you, the two uh, candidates that have been nominated uh, from uh, the ANC and EFF side, they have nominated Ndi Mzwanana, he is from the ATM, and the multi-party coalition have uh, nominated uh, Kolufelo uh, Mudiri and as uh, the, uh, of course, uh, candidates to run for the speaker position. So as we speak, the councillors are actually voting for these uh, two candidates. So it's really a wait and see game to see who will emerge as speaker uh, perhaps in the next couple of hours um, when the votes are concluded. Peter? All right. And it's secret ballot again, isn't it? Because that was what uh, caused all the uh, drama the last time. And it's the same process this time. Yes, certainly it's the same process. The rules basically dictate that once you have more than one nomination, then it automatically becomes a secret ballot. It's different if there is just one candidate that's being nominated, then it's really just, uh, you know, by show of hand. But once you have um, two people that are running for that particular position or any position, and those are three positions really. It's that of mayor, it is that of speaker, and and of Chief Whip. Once there is more than one nomination, then it automatically becomes a secret ballot, obviously facilitated uh, with uh, the help of the IEC, as we've been seeing happening here. And uh, it's drama after drama. And one can just hope that uh, this time around, as they are busy voting, they're adhering to the rules, they're respecting um, the IEC uh, uh, rules that have been set, and we can actually conclude with the business of the day. Um, many of us, of course, we've been here since early morning. It's been a long day. Everyone is tired. But uh, the, the, the councillors inside seem to still have energy. Uh, the tricks and games continue. Um, but we can just hope that this time around everything can conclude orderly and the new speaker can be um, announced today, which of course would pave the way for a mayor. Once the speaker is announced, the speaker would then determine determine a date on when a mayor will be elected. Um, and we've heard all the councillors saying that this needs to be treated as a priority. Um, and they're hoping that a new mayor can perhaps um, be elected, be uh, voted in before the end of this week. So it's a fast process. Peter, you would understand that uh, with uh, no um, executive in the capital city, no speaker, no mayor, and uh, no mayor committee, um, this affects service delivery. And there is the adjustment budget that still needs to be passed. That uh, um, is, of course, something that is uh, very sensitive and it goes to the heart of service delivery. Although the city did get an extension um, for the adjust, uh, adjustment budget until the end of March, um, originally you would uh, remember that uh, that uh, adjustment budget had to be passed by the end of February. Uh, but uh, after the whole um, 
a debacle around Randall Williams' resignation, the two uh, letters, that controversy, um, an extension was then, of course, given until the end of March. And if that adjustment budget is not passed, then ultimately it means a lot of trouble for the capital city. It also then puts the capital city at risk of being put under administration uh, by uh, the Gauteng uh, uh, government, of course. Of course, uh, you would remember um, uh, after Murunwa Makwarela was elected mayor, the Gauteng Premier, Panyazali Sufi, was here. Uh, he hailed, of course, uh, his uh, uh, election as mayor. Of course, it backfired. Um, the men uh, pulled wool over everybody's eyes. So we know the whole issue around the fake um, insolvency clearance certificate that ultimately um, led to him resigning as a mayor. But Banyaza has been here the whole day today, again, monitoring what's happening in council. Of course, uh, he will be addressing the media as well, just to tell us, you know, what's the way forward. And that is after the speaker has been announced. So uh, we have seen him here. We're not sure whether perhaps he has since left, but uh, was uh, a few minutes ago, he was still around and he was still saying that he will try and also, you know, share his views after a speaker has been announced. So there's those issues that are playing out and that is why uh, the Premier is very close to monitoring the situation here in the capital city to see whether uh, they can actually go through the process of uh, successfully electing the mayor um, and ultimately not being put out under administration. Many of the councillors here saying that of course that would affect their jobs because once uh, the municipality is put under administration, that means they would ultimately be jobless. So everybody here is trying to do the right thing to prevent um, the municipality from being uh, put under administration as that could create bigger problems for the city of Tswani and really the residents of the capital city because service delivery is already severely impacted. Being put under administration would just make things worse. Peter? Patricia, we'll leave it there, but uh, I have no doubt that uh, this story is still continuing and a lot of drama still to happen. Thanks so much for your time and uh, maybe we can catch up with you again a bit later. That's our reporter Patricia Fasaki in Pretoria. There is a voting process underway for a speaker and uh, you can't make this up. Lie detector tests, fake certificates, you just can't believe it.